Have you ever wondered how the wealthy keep getting richer? Then you're not alone. People assume the rich have some secret formula for making money that's out of reach for the rest of us. But that's not entirely true. Sure, they have more opportunities than the average person, but here's the thing. The strategies they use to increase and preserve their wealth are within anyone's reach. Take a look at these assets. They're the assets the rich use to preserve their wealth. And if you're curious about how these assets work, stick around, because I'll be diving deep into the details. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Asset number six, gold and precious metals. For centuries, gold has remained a prized asset among the wealthy. From the days of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs to today's elite, gold has always been a symbol of power and affluence. This sentiment still holds true today, as many of the world's wealthiest individuals, including John Paulson, Lord Jacob Rothschild, Ray Dalio, and Naguib Sawiris, frequently engage in gold trading and acknowledge its importance in their investment portfolios. One of the main reasons so many billionaires invest in gold is because it acts as a safe haven and a solid asset for retaining value. When the economy is unstable or the market is volatile, gold tends to maintain its value or it even grows its value, serving as a protective barrier for investors. Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, which happens to be the world's largest hedge fund by a substantial margin, is one of the biggest advocates of gold. Similarly, Lord Jacob Rothschild, an influential member of the tremendously wealthy Rothschild banking family, also prefers gold over the US dollar. The Rothschild family has a long-standing tradition of holding gold, and they have been said to have supplied the Duke of Wellington with gold to defeat Napoleon over two centuries ago. In 2016, the Rothschilds significantly cut their substantial US dollar holdings and instead invested in gold and other currencies. Their deep appreciation for the precious metal is evident from their archive website, where they say the history of gold trading would be incomplete without the Rothschilds, and the history of the Rothschilds would be very different without gold. Investing in physical gold comes with numerous advantages. It's a tangible investment that's simple to buy and sell, acting as a reliable store of value that can be converted into cash quickly. However, in this trade, you must consider the potential downsides of purchasing physical gold so that you can make an informed decision that suits you best. Asset number five, cash and cash equivalents. A large number, and possibly the majority of wealthy people, practice frugality. They understand that extravagant spending can seriously damage their wealth, but don't get me wrong, because they tend to choose and pay premium for essential needs and occasionally splurge on certain luxuries. But it's also common for them to keep a substantial portion of their wealth in cash or highly liquid cash equivalents. Cash equivalents are securities specifically designed for short-term investments. They usually possess a strong credit rating and can easily be converted into cash. Examples include treasury bills, bank certificates of deposit, commercial paper, and other money market mutual funds. These financial instruments generally have short maturities and are traded in highly liquid markets, which makes it easy to find buyers or sellers. They're also considered to be relatively safe investments. Warren Buffett, CEO of Berkshire Hathaway and one of the most famous investors of all time, has a portfolio full of money market accounts and treasury bills. Treasury bills are short-term notes issued by the US government to raise funds, and they're often bought at a discounted price. When you sell them, the difference between the face value and the selling price is your profit. One main advantage of investing in treasury bills is the extremely low risk they carry. Since these securities are backed by the government, you can be pretty confident that your initial investment is safe and you don't have to worry about losing money. Treasury bills can also be bought in smaller amounts, which makes them more accessible to people who don't have a lot of money to invest. Even if you only have $1,000 to invest, you can obtain a greater return on your money by purchasing a treasury bill instead of putting it in a regular savings account. Asset number four, stocks and stock funds. What do John Paulson, Warren Buffett, Daniel Loeb, Ray Dalio, and Carla Kahn all have in common? Well, they're all billionaires who have made fortunes from the stock market. If you're acquainted with investment concepts, you'd know that stocks aren't exactly considered the most reliable options. Yet these billionaires have defied the odds and amassed fortunes in this area. They're among the top earners on Wall Street, as reported by Investopedia. It's quite impressive, wouldn't you agree? It's no shocker that most billionaires invest in the stock market, and parts of their portfolios contain similar types of company that you'd find in an average investor's portfolio. They hold positions in various sectors like energy, consumer staples, and technology. But the significant difference lies in the size of their investments. These billionaires understand the value of stable and reliable stocks that offer consistent growth, and in some instances, hefty dividends. 
Yet as a billionaire, you'd have unique advantages when it comes to investing. You'd have access to extensive information and analysis, which lets you explore lesser known assets and undertake higher risk investments compared to well-established blue chip companies. You'd have the resources to invest in IPOs, emerging markets, and promising startups in ways that other investors might not be able to match. For example, consider Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, which holds a substantial position in BYD, China's leading electric vehicle company. Asset 3. Private Equity and Hedge Funds Private equity and hedge funds function closely with securities and trading markets. While they aren't identical, these two investment tools are loved by billionaires and high net worth individuals who can afford to make sizable investments and bear higher risks. Such people are often referred to as sophisticated or accredited investors. If you're unfamiliar with investing or the finance industry, the term hedge fund might go right over your head or get mixed up with other financial terms. A hedge fund is a type of investment vehicle where a team of managers oversees the investments to maximize returns for the investors. Hedge funds are generally structured as limited liability companies or limited partnerships. They can invest in a variety of assets, including stocks, bonds, futures, options, real estate, commodities, currencies, and a vast array of derivatives, such as delta neutral investing and collateralized debt obligations. On the flip side, private equity involves trading in privately owned businesses to maximize profitability. Both types of investments require a significant amount of capital, making them inaccessible to many investors. Asset 2. Real Estate Andrew Carnegie, one of the wealthiest entrepreneurs of all time, once made a claim that 90% of the world's millionaires created their wealth through real estate. Would you believe that this statement still holds true today, just as it did more than a century ago? Why is that? It's because many self-made billionaires such as Donald Brin, Neil Bloom, and Leonard Stern have amassed their fortunes in real estate. Forbes reports that real estate magnate Donald Brin has a net worth of $17.4 billion, making him the wealthiest real estate baron in the United States. The Irvine Company, which he founded, owns 129 million square feet of real estate, predominantly in Southern California. He owns about 124 housing complexes and 124 office buildings. Brin even owns 97% of the MetLife building in New York City. Neil Bloom, a Chicago gambling and real estate tycoon who owns the Ritz-Carlton in 900 North Michigan, is another major player in this sector. Besides his casinos in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, Bloom also has establishments in Chicago and Schenectady, New York. Even billionaires like Leonard Stern, who possess industrial real estate primarily in New Jersey, have reaped considerable profits from the growth of industrial assets. In 1959, Leonard Stern joined his father's business which sold pet supplies. Seven years later, he stepped into real estate and purchased a warehouse in New Jersey. His company, Hearts Mountain, owns more than 260 pieces of real estate, primarily in New Jersey. Much of Hearts' portfolio is in warehouses, including properties in New Jersey, Atlanta, Baltimore, and Charlotte, North Carolina. Asset one is fine arts and valuable collectibles. Besides real estate, billionaires also invest in other financial assets, such as priceless paintings, sculptures, and other collectibles for monetary and personal gain. Though most of the elite are genuinely passionate about art collecting, others do it because art offers a unique investment opportunity. Investing in art is an appealing option for billionaires because of its potential for massive returns and the portfolio diversification it offers. Unlike the usual investments like stocks and bonds, art is a tangible asset that is not directly tied to financial markets, making it a lower risk investment. Furthermore, the art market has proven to be a lucrative investment over the years with top-tier artworks regularly fetching millions at auctions. Certain private collectors like David Geffen, whose net worth is $7.7 .7 billion, possess galleries comparable to small museums. He also has the biggest private art collection in the United States and the second largest globally. Similarly, Steve Cohen, a renowned hedge fund manager with a net worth of $17.5 billion, has invested over $1 billion in pricey artworks, including pieces by Jeff Koons, Picasso, and Andy Warhol. Billionaires also diversify their portfolios with valuable collectibles, such as cars, rare books, jewelry, and intellectual property. For instance, Michael Dell, the founder of Dell Computers, has a pricey collection of vintage photographs. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, retrieved Apollo 11's booster rockets and numerous other NASA artifacts from the ocean floor. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then you're gonna love this. Money Pickle is offering you guys, get this, a free financial consultation with accredited financial advisor. Just use the link below or in the comments to book your free call. If you've ever had a question you wanted to ask a professional, whether that's a retirement question, investing, getting out of debt, or whatever it may be, now is your chance. It's free and costs you nothing. 
So go and get your free consultation with an actual real human and get your burning questions answered. Until next time, have a great day.